All right, everybody, I have a couple minutes after the half hour mark. So hello, everybody. Can everybody hear me OK? Um, when I share my entire screen, I cannot see the chat. So I have my phone up with this webinar going to that way I can make sure that I can grab your guys's questions as they might come up. So I wanted to make sure that everybody could hear me OK. Um, and then hello, this is me, y'all. Happy Wednesday. And happy Valentine's Day, if nobody has told you that yet. Uh, we are so excited to have you guys gathered here in this um, space from all over. There are students from all over the states here, which is super exciting. Um, and we have a very special guest with us. Um, Miss Allison is here from the SNHU Academic Support Team. So the two of us are going to be talking today about mostly about your week seven project that's coming up. Um, that y'all have due. We're talking about it a whole week early, so you're not behind. We're just talking about it early, um, but we will touch base on the week six assignment, the journal assignment you guys have this week too, but we're also going to talk about how you can utilize those academic support center services for your success here on your journey with SNHU. So First and foremost, as always, your experience here at Southern New Hampshire University is important to us. It is our policy and practice to create an inclusive and accessible learning environment. If there are aspects of instruction or course design that present barriers to accessibility, please notify the Online Accessibility Center, the OAC, as soon as possible at 866-305-9430. You can also email this incredible team at oac at snhu.edu or visit the Online Accessibility Center website. Just as a reminder, y'all, if you're not sure what the Online Accessibility Center team does. They are a department here at the university that help you get content in a way that works best for your learning style and your learning needs. So if this is something that you have questions about, you want to know more about, reach out directly to them and they can go through what their process looks like. A couple of webinar reminders. You don't have a camera or microphone enabled today. You just need to be able to hear myself and Allison and see the screen um, as we chat through today's um, session. If you have never been to a webinar, has anybody never been to a webinar um, or watched the recordings? Most of the webinars for this term are on demand, which is where they've been loaded every Monday morning on that first year experience um, YouTube channel. But we were live for the preterm pre webinar and then we're live here in week six. So the format is typically the on demand, but it's kind of fun to get together. That's why I want you guys to use the chat, get to know each other, chat a little bit, because it's just more fun to know there's other students that might have the same questions or being going through the same things that y'all are going through. Um, as a reminder, this is an academic space, so always be mindful of your conduct. And then as always, these webinars, they're not graded, they're not required. There's no points associated or grades associated with them, but I sure hope they've helped you from week to week as you've navigated your SUM 07 course with completing your assignments and just feeling more connected to the university, but also learning a few things, right? And having a little bit of fun. I hope you've had a little bit of fun and laugh um, along the way. So we are in week six. So here in week six, y'all just have that um, journal assignment that is due. As a reminder, you have a template just like you've had templates in previous assignments here in your course. This week, everything focuses heavy on feedback. So make sure that you review the content that's actually within your module, but then also review the required reading and any other required resources or supporting documents that are out there because it'll help you just really get an understanding of feedback and the importance of feedback, but also how diversity can play a part in feedback. So this week you're answering these five questions. Um, one, why you think feedback from others is important. Share your thoughts, give your perspective, write in complete sentences. That's what this is here for. Question two is to describe your perceptions regarding receiving feedback. So how has receiving feedback maybe made you feel? Um, or how does it make you feel? Could you improve your reaction? Is your reaction pretty good to feedback? I know, for example, I'm somebody that if it's good feedback, I like it. <laughs> but if it's constructive feedback, it might take me a minute and I have to think about it, right? Anybody else like that? Um, question three is to describe how you can use past feedback to inform how you will give and receive feedback now. What have you learned from past experiences in which you receive feedback? Question four is really thinking about the impact that diversity awareness has on giving and receiving feedback when you're communicating and collaborating, so working with other peoples, and thinking about what problems you can run into if you don't understand diversity awareness. And then the last question is just describe how you can use strategies for interacting with diverse groups of people as you give and receive feedback. OK, so the entire theme of the week six assignment centers around the importance of feedback. 
what it means, the value that it has, and also taking a look at ourselves on areas that maybe we're strong in with our feedback and areas that we could improve upon, okay? So that is this week's assignment that you guys have in Stream 107 for week six. As a reminder, these are due by Sunday. So you might have already started it. You might have already turned it in. Uh, but the big key is make sure that you have it due by Sunday. OK, now going on with the next couple of weeks, they're going to go super fast. I want to make sure you all know that. So I don't know about you, but I mentioned earlier in the chat when I first hopped on, I can't believe how fast this term is gone. Like we're already in week six. Well, I'm going to tell you that week seven and week eight move really quickly. So my best advice to you is to plan ahead for your success in your Stu 07 course or any other classes that you're taking this term because these next two weeks just tend to move really pretty quickly because you're kind of wrapping everything up. So next week in week seven, you have a final project, that academic success plan that is due. Now, this is not anything new. Most of the concepts and topics that are in that final project, if you've taken a peek at it, you've already covered them at some point throughout the term. What you're basically going to be doing is connecting the dots. What I want to remind you of is that this project, as you can see here, is worth a significant chunk of your grade. So it is so important for you to turn this assignment in. I have had students that were doing really great in the term and they didn't turn this in and they did not pass the class. So do not let that be you. You have worked way too hard to give up in the last couple of weeks. So keep pushing forward. If you have fallen behind in your classes, this is the time to reach out to your course instructors and ask them if you can turn in assignments that you are missing or maybe redo anything that you struggled with. They can very much say no. But the answer is always no unless we ask. So let's do ourselves a favor, be our best advocate, and reach out so we can finish these next two weeks strong. So just a reminder, this project is worth a significant chunk of your grade at 250 points. What is this project and what is the purpose of it? Basically, you're going to open up a template. So you have a template. You're not starting from scratch, which I don't know about y'all, but do you like the templates? Sometimes students are like, I like to do my own thing. But most students typically like the templates because it gives them a starting place. You're going to open up that template for the final project that's underneath module seven and you're able to type directly in it and what you're doing like i mentioned earlier is connecting the dots of what you've learned so far this term so you're going to think about your schedule right like your how you prioritize your time you're going to think about those schedule interruptions like things that you need to really be considerate about as far as your schedule goes so that you can achieve your goals you're going to revisit the, that academic mission and those three short-term goals that you wrote back in week four what you want to do is take a look at any feedback um, on graded assignments for any topics that are on this week seven paper. Take a look and see if there were things that you needed to change or update or things that you could have expanded your thoughts on as you fill out and answer the questions for module seven. So trust the template, just pull it up, take a look at the questions, answer them with everything you've, that you've learned this term within your discussions, within your assignments, within the reading, and then you're going to want to, of course, use your resources. We've talked a lot about using our resources both inside and outside the classroom here in STU 107, and this is the perfect time to put those things into place, which is why we have one of the most amazing academic support coaches here with us um, today. Everybody say hey to Allison Johnson. Um, you guys get to hear a lot about me and you get to hear my voice all term long um, in the webinars, but I love to bring in other departments so you can get to know the human side of them too. So some fun facts I like to share about Allison um, is that she used to teach high school English in a rural town that didn't even have a traffic light. So is anybody from a real small town and you're like, oh yeah, I totally get that. Like I'm from, I live there now, right? I always joke in my webinars when I have them with Allison that my town had a blinking stoplight. Like that's what mine did. <laughs> it really didn't do anything. Um, but Allison has been an academic advisor for online students. She loves to work with students who have been out of school for a while. So any of you been out of school for a while? Um, but I, one of my favorite fun facts is that she's a huge fan of stand up comedy and has a collection of um, comedy records, which I think is absolutely incredible to know these little things um, about the people that are here supporting you and your success here at the university. But the biggest takeaway I want you to know is that she is one of the many people that are here to help you at the university um, and with what her team does. So how this works is I'm going to kind of interview Allison, I guess um, I'm going to ask her some questions. She's going to let us know um, her feedback and her thoughts from the academic support standpoint. 
once we get done with this today, then I will be running through just really quickly where to find everything for module seven um, and how to go through that um, module seven project example and make sure you guys know where to find it. So first and foremost, Allison, how do students find and access academic support? So hello um, and happy Valentine's Day. Um, the the picture right here says it all. The easiest way to find us is in all of your classes. If you look right above that fancy banner that says the name of your course, um, you'll see course menu tools, my new online student services, Shapiro Library, and then academic support. And if you click on that, it takes you to the academic support area. So it go, opens up in another tab. It's also underneath your module um, eight I think in the module list too, but this is the, the quickest way to get to us from the navigation menu. Perfect, I always tell students just click at the top. <laughs> it's the easiest way to find y'all, but they are on the side if you click on learning modules all the way down at the bottom, but always just everything you guys need is right at the top. So Allison, is academic support only for SNU 107 students or like first term students or like what support options do you guys offer and why should they want to utilize this now? So the first and uh, the first question, it is for your whole entire academic career. So if you pr continue on and get a graduate degree, we're here for you as well. We're embedded in every single one of the classes um, through your time here at SNHU. Um, so we have a wide menu. I like to call it a menu because I think we can all relate to that experience of sitting down at a restaurant and having a menu in front of us. And just like a restaurant, there's times that you're going to need certain things or want certain things um, that will be the best thing for you. And there's times that you might not. So I like to walk through the whole menu so you know what's there and what your options are and probably like when to use them and, and what they're for. So <clears throat> this little tile when you come into the space, if you scroll down, you, you see all of these tiles and it gives you a little description um, so that if you you go back to it, you can say, ah, I remember when Allison was talking about that. And then you can try it out. So um, the 24 seven drop in tutoring is a chat based um, area with a whiteboard. It is 24 seven. So if you're working really late at night, early in the morning, kind of weird hours, and you're just feeling really stuck on a math problem or a concept from the class, something that you can you think you can text back and forth and get some information about and use a whiteboard on to kind of describe it. This is a really good option for you. Um, it's the the tutors are there under a wide variety of areas. There is voice chat available, but it's not always available. So just think of mine text based little nuggets, kind of like a appetizer, something that that you can, you know, one math problem, one concept kind of thing to get you started if you're feeling stuck. Written feedback comes back within 12 hours there. When you click on that try it now button, it takes you to a form that you fill out. The written feedback goes to a real person, so you want to tell the human being that's going to look at your paper what you are looking for in terms of feedback. So if you've heard anything from your instructors, things to look for, um, information about the assignment, the more information they have, the more tailored that feedback can be to help you. Um, you can use this as a means to set an earlier deadline for yourself too, so you know that you get it done. The written feedback comes back within 12 hours, sometimes sooner. I think it's good to plan for a day because you want to also read the feedback and be able to apply it. So if you submit it a day before it's due or a day before your due date, that'll give you enough time to read it and apply the feedback that you get. Workshops. If you're enjoying this experience, then come try out the workshops with us. We have workshops in a variety of topics, um, all the different disciplines, and just things that help you be a really good learner. Um, and so, you know, time management, um, executive function, statistics, we have drop-in sessions where you can come with questions. Um, two of our popular ones are about APA citation drop-in and statistics drop-in. So if you have some specific questions, that's an area to pop into, um, but it's also kind of information out like this on a, on a lot of topics about writing and math, um, where you can ask questions at the end and engage with other learners as well. The other thing that's really cool about the workshops is you can sign up for as many as you want. If you have just some space in your day, maybe, um, Maybe you end up having plans get canceled and you have two hours free. You can pop over to the workshops and see if there's anything running for that day. P 
peer tutoring is a one-on-one -on -one space. And I always like to point out the peer tutors because the peer tutors, this could be something you aspire to as well. Peer tutors are people who are professionally trained and are succeeding in their classes at SNHU. They've been exactly where you are. Um, they've either just recently graduated or very close to graduation and have a lot of knowledge to impart and a lot of empathy to give. Um, peer tutoring sessions are one-on-one. -on -one in an online platform a little like this where you have the screen share you have the video and the audio where you can really talk through something with somebody um, who's been there and we have peer tutors from a wide variety of the different subject areas and different classes um, so if you're feeling stuck on on an assignment or a concept you really need to talk it through with somebody and you think that 24 7 drop in is not going to cut it you really need that connection this is a really good space for you Academic coaching, I am one of the academic coaches. Academic coaching is also in a pre-scheduled one-on-one -on -one space, same space where we share the camera, the video, the, the whole bells and whistles of everything. When you're working with an academic coach, we're working on some specific academic goals. So if there's some things that you know about yourself that you're hearing feedback of, um, you know, things aren't getting turned in on time, you need some help with time management prioritization, um, building up your academic skills, reading comprehension, um, some support for uh, learning differences, for example. Those are the areas that you might be interested in working with a coach over time. What we'd do is we'd meet with you in a planning session, we'd talk about the barriers or the challenges you're experiencing, we'd set a goal, and then we'd uh, work weekly um, and set up a schedule and a plan to work on that goal with you so that you meet your academic goals. Just a little extra one-on-one -on -one help and then and support. And then we have not just the frequently asked questions, which you can click on for more, but we have some resources too. So we have a YouTube channel. If you go to academic resources, if you like videos, we have a bunch of videos as well. Um, so that's the whole menu. Um, and you're welcome to pick and choose from that menu and combine things, create yourself a combo meal. That's all there for you as a student for every single one of your classes. End of spiel. <laughs> so much to offer, which is always absolutely incredible. There was a question in the chat, Allison. A student was having trouble connecting to the 24-7 tutoring. Like it just takes a long time to connect. Would that be a help desk issue or would that be something they could email you guys on? I wanted to make sure we could answer that in case somebody was stuck. So it's okay to let IT help desk know and it's in um, emailing academic support at snhu.edu, which I'll type in the, the chat too, if there's any problems or questions academic support at snu.edu. It could also just be the time that you were doing it. I would say try again because sometimes there's just outages, um, internet and things. So um, if you try it again and experience the same thing, we definitely want to know that. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Um, are there any common mistakes that students should be aware aware of or tips or tricks for success on not only putting together this um, final project coming up here in week seven, but any of their writing assignments as they move into um, the end of the term and even starting classes next term. So the big thing, and you you just spoke to this beautifully too, Melanie, the big thing, templates are very helpful, but templates kind of in our minds, I think make us go into form filling out mode where we're maybe not adding as much detail as we normally would because we kind of see it as a worksheet. So that's a common mistake that I sometimes see with templates is not enough detail or incomplete sentences, sometimes also skipping a line and missing a whole section of the template it happens. So the uh, tip or trick for that, and any class that has a template especially, is to double check it to the rubric at the end, make sure you're grading yourself. So look at the rubric, look at what your instructor is gonna be grading you on, read through it and double check it and pretend, you've heard this person's voice. So pretend you're that person and figure out, is this how I'm gonna be graded? Are they gonna see those, those things? Make sure you have enough time to really look at that. Even if you don't have time, look at it. Um, complete sentences, spell check, that's where the written feedback option that we offer can be really helpful is just to have somebody else look at it, somebody in your household look at it, read it out loud, because that's a good way of catching mistakes and, and also honoring your work. See, you know, read it to somebody else or have somebody in your household read it back to you. That can be really good too. If you have 
um, a, you know, a child who's practicing reading, say, read, read mom and dad's assignment out loud. I want to see how it sounds when you, you read it. I'm doing homework too. Um, so those are the big things. Give yourself enough time, do some revision. Even when you don't have enough time, do some revision anyway. Um, I think those are the big ones. Such great advice, y'all. Um, it's just really important to kind of think about as you're planning ahead for this project, like the things you can do to just be your most successful. So those are some great tips to share, not only for this writing assignment, but any of the writing assignments you guys have coming at you um, as you continue your journey here at SNHU. So where are my procrastinators? Where are you? My folks that like to put things off until the last minute. Um, this is a good reminder for you, or you know, not even if you are a procrastinator. Sometimes we have this plan to get everything done and we're planning ahead and we're ready and life just throws us a curveball and our plans just fall apart. So what happens if a student procrastinates or maybe like the week just gets away from them? Um, what are some tips and tricks you have for them for their success to get this project ready to go? So, and I, I love the way that you put that too, because yeah, sometimes the best laid plans, right? They, they, things happen. Life, life be life in, as we say. Um, and so, you know, it, done is better than not done always, right? And so doing what you can, keeping in mind that, yeah, it's great to get it in the deadline. Um, do the best that you can to get it in by, by the time that it's due. Even if you get a point deduction and turning it in late, some points is better than no points. Um, so you can kind of cost benefit analysis that. Um, but the most important thing, just like the sticky note said, is just do it. I think often, especially when, when we're talking about procrastination, sometimes feelings and perfectionism can really tie into that. And so um, sometimes people might say, oh, it's too late. I'm just not going to turn it in. No, turn it in. Um, let your instructor be the judge of it um, because you you don't know until you get the feedback. So even if it's not all the way done, some points is always better than no points. Um, and just being honest and, you know, letting your instructors know what's going on with you is also always helpful. And if you're a chronic procrastinator, we even have a workshop for that. So um, some tips and strategies. It's not the worst thing. It's our minds being protective of us um, and there's ways to manage it. And so just do it is your mantra for when you procrastinate. And a lot of those things that we talked about are still really important. You can still grade yourself. You can still double check the rubric. The 12, the 12 hour, the feedback might not happen, but you can still submit it for feedback if it's an assignment that you think you're gonna have to build on later where the feedback would be helpful. Um, so that's. That's the advice I have for that situation. Which is always the best advice. Y'all just remember that you want to give the best that you can. And if you have fallen behind or if you're stuck on something, you're not sure on something, life gets away from you. The One of the best things you can do is communicate. Communicate. I'm going to turn my camera on so you guys can see me say communicate. <laughs> um, let your instructors know what's going on in your life. Um, I have taught for over 20 years and I will tell you that I promise that you're not going to be the first student that like they got sick or somebody was in an accident or kids got sick or they broke a bone. You know, life happens, work schedules change, um, computers crash, internet goes out. I mean, things happen. We're aware of that. So just communicate with your instructors if something has come up, um, because at the end of your term with those only those couple weeks left and this assignment being a big heavy amount of points for your overall grade. It's really important that you get that submitted. So just a couple of reminders, as always, before I take a minute and go over the actual template itself and where to find everything for week seven, is just to always remember how you're going to be graded. So make sure that you utilize that rubric that's underneath um, each module and take a look over how you're going to be graded on those assignments so that you're aware and you know what's expected of you. Um, I always tell students, Allison and I both do like trust and use the academic success plan template. Open it up, type right in it. Um, like Allison said, we contend when there's a template to just kind of answer the questions. Don't forget the details. Make sure you have all the details and information because somebody that is reading it, your instructor, they've gotten to know you these last few weeks, but they don't know the ins and outs of you. So they might not be able to understand your complete thought if you don't put in those details, okay? So remember that. And as always, 
use your resources. You have your advisor, you have your instructor, you have the SNHU academic support team. You have the videos here that'll be loaded um, in the learning community and the first year experience channel. Like utilize the support that is literally just a click away for your success. But the biggest thing is as you work through this final project is to be yourself. Don't try to sound like anybody else. Be yourself because one of the coolest things about this academic success plan that y'all put together is I will have students that took SNU 107 like their first couple of terms and now they're getting ready to graduate and they will tell me that they like found that paper. They found that project. They pulled it out because maybe they were struggling with something or maybe they just like happened to find it and they're like, oh my gosh, this was so helpful. Like this was kind of like a little roadmap of how I was going to be successful in my classes. So take that advice and make this document count and put your best foot forward. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to share my screen with y'all. Um, so if you need to hop off, you're more than welcome to. But what I'm going to do is actually go through module seven. So I wanted to make sure that you guys can see my actual screen here and the chat is on my phone because I can't see it here. It sounds like you guys are good to go. Perfect. So as a reminder, just real quick, like Allison said, when you log into your Brightspace classrooms from any of your classes you're taking, academic support is right here. You literally click on it and it's going to pull up that whole menu um, of services that can support your success. For module seven, like always, course menu, learning modules, and then when you scroll down, you go down to module seven, right? You guys have already done this. A couple of things I want to point out. One, you will see a discussion assignment next week in module seven. However, it's not graded. It is a completely just there as an opportunity if you wanted to share tips for your that you were successful in this term or how you put together your academic success plan, that final project, that is the area you can put that information. Do not put your project there. Do not put pieces of your project there. It's really just a space and an opportunity for you guys to give some feedback um, regarding the project and kind of the style of how you were successful this term. Again, you don't have to do anything in that week seven discussion. It's just there as an opportunity to give your feedback. The actual assignment is this 7-2 project to create an academic success plan. As always, click on the guidelines and rubric, right? And it's gonna pull up the entire overview. I'm gonna scroll through this pretty quickly because everything we need is at the bottom but I encourage you to read through it. Um, as you go over it, it's gonna, as always, go through the directions, make sure you have an understanding of what the assignment is and how to complete it. You will notice it'll list all of the different areas and questions you're gonna be answering. There's 12 of them on your project. As you scroll down underneath what to submit, you're gonna see academic success plan. So you can click on this academic success plan template, click the blue, gets you to where you wanna go, right? And it's gonna open up that blank Word document. If for some reason you don't have Microsoft Word or something compatible yet, remember you can go to the online student services or that little help button, arrow down and scroll down to Office 365 and you can get it for free as an SNHU student. So just a reminder in case you don't have it, this is the template that you want to use. You'll also notice underneath supporting materials, the template is there again. So click the blue, download it, open it up. You can type right in it. But I wanted to point out this project example. If you click on project example, it actually pulls up a completed academic success plan. This document gives you a wonderful foundation and a great starting point for what your completed finalized academic success plan should look like for you. OK, word of advice, top tip, do not copy this verbatim. Um, every single faculty member has this. <laughs> We know what it looks like. We know what the language is because we've seen it from term to term. So make sure as you're going through your own template and answering the questions that you're giving your own unique answers and feedback. Don't forget the details, but I wanted to just kind of run through it really quick so you can get a sense of how you should be answering these questions. OK, so first question, identify a problem solving technique or method that you have used in a previous situation and explain how it helped you. How might problem solving methods be different in diverse cultures or fields of work? And how can effective problem solving help you in your academic journey? So you'll notice question one actually has three parts. So this student chose to have three bullets and they answered each question with complete sentences and gave some examples, okay? Question two, identify your learning style and explain how knowing or learning about your learning style helped support your success throughout this course. So this student again, listed their learning style. They have a couple um, and then they explained in this class they learned this. So for them, they learned how they can study best and prioritize their time and they gave some examples of how knowing this was important and also understanding their learning style was important. 
Question three, identify which of the five successful habits of an SNHU student have been most helpful for you throughout this course. Explain how those habits have helped you. Do you guys remember when we talked about the five successful habits of SNHU students? You guys remember those? So they're coming back, right? <laughs> so this student chose two of the five successful habits because those two habits resonated with them. Keep in mind with this question asks, identify which of the five successful habits. So pick more than one, okay? And then give the details and give the information, okay? Question four, explain how you will stay on track in your courses and overcome interruptions that may impact your schedule. This student, what they're gonna do is they're gonna make a to-do list for each week. They also wanna work closely with their advisor and their instructor, and they have a goal of getting assignments done on Friday so that they're not having to do anything on the weekend because that's convenient for them. Again, make your answers unique to you. This just gives you an idea of how to answer them. Also notice that this question talked about overcoming interruptions. Well, this student, their biggest interruptions tended to be their kiddos when they were home. So they talked a little bit about what they're going to do to overcome those distractions. Question five, this is really important, y'all. Make sure you read the details. Choose two SNHU resources. Remember, what are the SNHU resources? People, places, things that are part of the university, right? So you need to choose at least two. And then you need to choose two social supports. Remember, social supports are what? outside the university, okay? And then you want to explain how they'll help most with achieving your mission and goals and prioritizing your time. So you'll notice that this student broke down the two resources. They listed their instructor and why, the details, why they picked them and chose them. Same thing with academic support, okay? And then they listed their two social supports. One of them was their partner and why, and the other one was their best friend, why they chose them and how they'll help them, okay? So notice it's not long paragraphs, but everything has enough detail so anybody reading this could understand the points and the feedback the student was trying to get across, right? Question six, remember your uh, mission statement and those three short-term goals that you put together back in week four. Take a look at them, see what your instructor said, if you have any changes, if you were missing anything, um, you wanna make sure those changes are in here, okay? So you wanna list that personal academic mission statement. And if you did great on that assignment, you just copy and paste in this part, okay? Um, but make sure, this is a big reminder, a lot of times students and they're copying and pasting, they forget a sentence or they forget one of the goal, one of the three goals or something like that. So make sure you have your complete personal academic mission statement listed and make sure that you have all three of those short-term goals um, listed, okay? So you'll notice the student has those, they listed them out, one, two, and three, so they could double check that they had everything. Question eight, describe the importance of setting goals on your academic journey. Why is setting goals important to you on your academic journey? Give your feedback. Question nine, explain how you are going to stay motivated to achieve your goals and mission statement based on what you have learned in SNU 107. So this student realized that they're their biggest motivator. You know, they're the ones that have to put together that to-do list. They're the ones that have to utilize those SNHU resources. And they listed those things out, but also understanding that SNU 107 taught them about prioritizing their time and making sure they stay organized in a way that works for them. Okay, so you'll just see that these are very honest personal answers. This is actually a student's paper that they gave us permission to utilize, which is pretty cool because it gives you kind of just an example of like how to answer these questions. Question 10, explain why an awareness of diversity is beneficial to giving and receiving feedback when collaborating with others. Give your thoughts, give your feedback, complete sentences, don't forget the details. Question 11 and 12, Whew, we're almost done y'all. Explain why it is important to take ownership, be vulnerable, ask for help, and have an open mind to achieve your goals. So we've talked a lot here in these last couple of weeks um, about feedback. Last week we talked a lot about vulnerability, being open-minded. Um, so what did you learn from those discussions? What did you learn from thinking about that topic? And then the very last question is explain what is your biggest takeaway from this course? So what is like the number one thing that you learned in SNU 107 that you're going to carry with you as you um, navigate your SNHU journey all the way to the finish line of earning your degree? So that is the project. Okay, everybody. Again, I wanted to show you just really quick that you can find that under module seven, scroll all the way down. Remember the template that you type in is right here underneath the academic success plan, but underneath supporting materials, you have project example. When you click on it, it'll pull up that PDF document. And then here again is the project template, the blank one. I did see a question in the chat about where you can find that Office 365 if you don't have Microsoft Word. Top of your class, this help arrow right here, 
click on online student services. And when you do that, it pulls up all the departments um, here at the university. And you want to scroll down right here to Office 365 and other software. Click through, click the blue, get to where you want to go, click through the prompts. If you get stuck, reach out to your SNHU advisor or reach out to the SNHU help desk, okay? So I am going to stop presenting here, y'all, and come back to the chat and make sure that I have all of your guys' questions. The biggest thing is we're week six, okay? So as a reminder, this week in week six, you have that journal assignment that we talked about at the beginning of the webinar. Make sure you utilize that template, answer the questions, put the details and information in, and then save it and get it submitted before by Sunday, okay? So it's due by Sunday. Anytime before then is perfect. Um, next week, that is when you have this final project that we just ran through the whole thing. So we're talking about it a whole week early. That final project is due the Sunday of module seven. However, the reason we talk about it early y'all is so that you can get a head start on beginning to fill it out, getting it put together and getting it off to the academic support team, okay? Um, if you have questions, if you get stuck, this is the best place is to come back to the learning community, rewatch the webinar, reach out to the academic support team, reach out to your instructor. Y'all do not hesitate to reach out to your instructors. We want you to be successful in your classes and we see your grades. We know your past work. So make sure if you're stuck on something, if you have questions to let us know. Y'all, that's it. So any questions, anything we missed, was this helpful? The most important thing is we want to make sure that you found this webinar helpful. I will get it downloaded here in just a little bit, um, and it'll be up within 24 hours on that first year experience um, YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch it as much as you want or as much as you need to. Uh, we are so excited for y'all to be ending your term strong. Remember to reach out to your instructors if you have questions. Watch the Learning Community webinars. Let me know how things are going this term. And just remember, you guys, you got this and you're going to be absolutely fabulous. So happy Valentine's Day. I hope you had an absolutely um, amazing day today and the rest of your week. I can't believe that we're already here almost at the end of the term. Um, I will put the link um, in the chat of where you can find the webinar recording just in case. Um, but have a wonderful day. Allison, thank you so much for being here as always. And goodbye, everybody. Happy week six.